Well, we continue with the, the universal gaze, and hopefully, the or the nor will go smooth uh, as compared to to the other one we did. Right. We said we have two. We have the nand. We just dealt with the nand. We have the nor. All the primary gaze, the n, the or, the not can be represented using the nor gate. How do we do that? The not gate. The not gate, which says if I have an input x, it goes to x bar, can be represented using the nor. Uh, it looks like this. Much clearer drawing. Uh, so looks like this. Nope. There's a point there. There's a point there. Right. So if I have an input X, I will have X bar here. This is a NOR gate. In the process, if you are given a very big expression and you want to manipulate to know how does my logic diagram come out? We have the output, which is x bar. Our function is x bar. x bar is the same as, all right, before we get there, to get a nor, what you need is two operators. This is a combination of two operators, the or and the not. So you need an input here and an input here. This is a nor expression right there. So your target is to get two, two inputs, is to get the or operator, is to get the not operator. So if I have x bar, this I can represent as x bar plus x bar, because a plus a is equal to a. If I use if I use a plus a, is it not a? Is a right? And what is this is also the same as x bar x bar. What is a a? A a is equal to this is equal a. to what? It's called to A. A. All right, thank you very much. So this is equals to X here. This is also equal to X. But as I was looking at this one, I have the operator, yes, this one, but I don't have the node operator. So th that's why I had to cancel this one. If I can use this one and apply the more again, I can get X plus X with bar bar like this, true or false? X bar is equal to X bar, X bar. If I apply demo again, this is X plus X. True or false? I need that response. True. true. So now that I have my operators, this one and this one, I have two operators, I have two inputs, then I can go draw my logic gate. Two inputs in a nor gate. This gives us x bar. These two inputs can be simplified as one. And there you have your diagram. Then if I can move on to a or gate. How do I represent the or gate using the nor universal gate? Right. The function looks like this x, the diagram it looks like this x, y. How was I drawing my nor? The nor is drawn like this. How was I drawing it? Nope. It's like this. Make sure you know how to represent those logic diagrams. 
write it like this. Here we have or x plus y. X plus y. All right, this is the diagram. Uh, two nodes representing an OR gate. How do we get there? We had the output f, the function f is x plus y. We need to go to a point where we have the plus and the not, the OR and the not. And this represents a, a NOR. How do we go there? Let me start with x plus y. If I uh, put two bars here, I can get x bar, y bar, bar. Right, if I can simplify everything below this bar, I can get x plus y bar, bar. Okay, I come back here. So I already have two of my operators. I have the positive, I have the not. I also have another not here, but I know how to represent a not. This not can be represented by the one we just did before. So for x plus y, I can go directly. This is the same as x plus y bar bar. If I am represent if I am to represent the blue part only, the blue part only can represent it using two inputs, x and y. Nope. This is a nor giving an output. The output, this is the output. The output, which is x plus y bar. What do we then do with the output? The output, we have another bar on top. It means another node gate. Now, how do we represent a node gate? A node gate is like this. If we have x, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It will look like this. We have x bar. So in this case, our x is x plus y. Our x is x plus y. So if we have x plus y here, bar. Here we have x plus y bar bar. This is the same as x plus y. So if we transfer this logic, we will get x plus y. So this represents the OR logic gate. If we can do the same, apply the same logic to, to the end. How do we represent the end using the NO? The important thing is to get the plus and the NOT. This represents the NOR part. So if we were to start with end, what is the output of end using two functions? It's x plus, it's xy. If I apply the Morgan's two bars, I can get x bar plus y bar. On top of that, another bar. If I deal with the blue, if I deal with the blue part, I have x bar, I have y bar, two inputs, nor gate. Then here I have x, y. This is true. But I need to substitute this y bar and x bar uh, on function of only x and y. How do I do that? x bar, it means we have Enor gate 
with only x being represented like this for the not gate this is a not gate here and this is a not gate so finally if we are to remove those two we can have something like this two inputs two inputs x and y so that at this point we have x bar at this point we have y bar and at this point we have x y so if you are to represent an end gate using nos only this is the way it will look now we are done with the universal gates you will need this any questions any comments where you didn't understand nope we continue we now go to what we call boolean functions i think i probably spent too much time on uh, on those universal gates alas it was necessary All right boolean functions they express the relationships between uh the logic functions and the binary variables and the boolean function can be represented by a truth table a boolean expression and a circuit so if i'm given a boolean function f a boolean function f it can either be represented by an expression for example x bar y bar z bar plus x bar y z bar plus x y z bar this function f can be represented by this expression it can also be represented by a truth table truth table for example uh, with uh, this example i gave you look at how many variables do you have you have x you have y you have z x y z it means you have how many outputs possible combinations three. two to the power of three eight you have eight possible combinations so if i can go zero one zero one yeah zero zero one one zero 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 i can have my function f here we are yet to discuss how do you find the outputs from the expression but take out the point that this expression can be represented using this truth table this expression from the function f can also be represented by logic diagram for example I think the logic diagram is a bit more clearer and easier to draw from the expression. I have three inputs x, y, z. I have x naught. I draw like this. Mind the way I'm drawing these circuits coming sometime, you will be drawing them as well. This is my naught. I have y. This is my not. I have z. And this is my my not. So which means this whole part represents z bar. This is y not. And this is x not. And now, how do I represent that using this logic diagram? You then branch. The corresponding case we have x naught this is my x naught and it goes out we have my y naught this is my y naught it goes out we have my z naught it goes out what is combining them is the end gate this is an end gate of three inputs so output here is x y z 
I'll be asking you to draw these diagrams. You need to understand how do you come up with these diagrams. So here, for the next one, we have X bar. This is my X bar. You can remove it from here, or you can remove it from here. It's the same. I have my Y. Y is here. I have my Z bar. It's here. So I have another N. So I'll get X bar, Y, Z bar. The same can be done with this. After that, this end, we have an OR, we have an OR. So it means the other solution we get from here, I have three gates, three inputs. They are then combined by an OR gate with three inputs. An OR gate from this plus this plus. That's how you build up a logic diagram directly from the expression. So I've just give a function being represented by an expression can be turned into a truth table, can also be represented by a logic diagram. You can go from the expression dire directly to the logic diagram using the gates you have just learned. Right. We have uh, the Boolean expression. The Boolean expression, you need to understand that this is a Boolean expression. Two expressions can be different and mean or correspond to the same truth table, can mean the same thing. Two expressions can be different. We have f, it's called x bar, y bar, z bar, plus x bar, y, z bar, plus z bar, x, y. Well, let me say x, y, z bar. I have a function g, which is x bar, y bar, z bar, x bar, x, y, 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 okay, plus y, z bar. These two functions are the same. Let me see x, y, z, x, if I put y, z bar. Right, these two functions are the same, but their expressions are not the same. That is the thing with Boolean expressions. They cannot be the same, but uh, represent the same values, variables of the same function. All right. This is mainly because of the simplifying we can do using the laws we have. If I can simplify f, if I can simplify f, this part, if it remains the same, x, y, z, bar. But for these two, if I put out y, z, bar, out of the bracket, I can get x, bar, plus x x bar and x. Then if I can simplify this, x bar plus x, this is equal to one. So it means f is also equal to x bar y z plus y z like this, which is the same as this one. You can prove these two functions are the same, although the expressions were not the same. You can also use a truth table to prove that the two functions are the same. You can also use a truth table. You have function f, you have function g. You have the variables x, y, z. Put out the outputs of those functions. You get your one zeros, you get your one zeros, if it's the same, then you've proven that the two functions, although with the different expressions, 
they have the same uh, value of representing, they have the same value of representing the function. Right, that is it for the Boolean expression. Then for the truth tables, for the truth tables, each, continuing with the, the example, each for the truth table, continuing with the example I gave of function f, which is x, y, z, x, y, z, x, y, z, ba, 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 then we have x, z, z. How do we draw the truth table for that function? Each row with an output one becomes what we call a product term. And we deal with what we call sum of products. All right. If you notice, let me start with uh, explaining the, uh, okay, this point. Each output of one becomes a product term. Step number one. How do you come up with the truth table from the function with that expression? All right. Two, we have what we call the expression will then be in the terms of sum of sum of products. What do we mean? How do you identify the expression is in the form of sum of products? We have one sum. This is the sum part. We have two products. This is the products part. So if I identify their products and the products are being summed, then I have a function which is in the form of SOP. Are they products and those products are being summed? So here I have products X times Y times Z and they are being summed as you can see. I identified that I have sum of products. From sum of products, then each output of one becomes a product. So this is a product, this is a product, this is a product. I have three products. Each product, each output of one becomes a product, which means for these products, the outputs on the truth table, they are ones. In the rest, we don't have them there. They are zeros. So if I'm if I'm to draw a truth table for that function f x y z x y z x y z uh, x y z the other one is on x and z we have our products these are our products and they are being summed for each product the output is one. So if I'm to, to draw the truth table, I have three variables, x, y, z. It means eight outputs, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. What are the outputs of the function f? The outputs are one for the products we have there. What are the products? If you have x bar, y bar, z bar, what does it mean here? It means this is a 0, 0, 0. For the, formula, for the form of SOP, a 0 is represented by the complement of a function. A1 is represented by that function. So in this case, if you have a complement, this node. A0 is represented by a node. Let me not confuse you with complement. It's represented by a node of the given function. A1, it remains the same. So it means for anything with a bar on top of it, it's a zero. 
anything without a bar is a one. So what is this product? The first product is zero, zero, zero. So for here, where we have zero, 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 you have for the first product, the output being one. For the next one, this is zero, one, zero. You find your zero, one, zero here, you have an output of one. And the third one, we have one, one, zero, one, one, zero here, you have an output of one. The rest, these are zeros. This is how you come up with the truth table from an expression. There's obviously a way of doing it vice versa. From this truth table, you can come up with this expression. We'll get on to that later on. So I've just uh, presented to you a Boolean function f. I've presented to you a Boolean function f, which can be represented as an expression in form of a truth table and logic diagram. Don't let the terms confuse you. In, a, in an exam, you will be asked to draw the truth table and some of you will draw the logic diagram. Uh, that will be very unnecessary and you will fail. Right. Three representations of Boolean functions. We are going to be using these as we move forward, uh, for example, we go with uh, the next part, which is manipulation of algebraic functions, manipulation of or minimization of Boolean functions. Let's talk of minimization of Boolean functions. We already introduced the laws. And we mentioned the laws are to simplify. The laws are to minimize the Boolean function. Why we minimize the functions is so that we have simpler circuits with smaller sizes, which means they will be cheaper, probably faster, and is already seen less hardware because of the smaller numbers. Right. Let's say we have a function g. x, y, z plus x, y, z plus x, y, z. z bar, x bar. This function can be simplified. I'm not going to repeat the process. But this function can be simplified using the laws. If you use your laws here, use laws, we can simplify the function g to only x, y plus y, z. For practice purposes, this is another example of how you can use the laws. This expression can be simplified to, running out of time can be simplified to only x, y plus y, z. Reason being, we want to use less logic gates. They will probably be faster. Less logic gates means less hardware. Less hardware it means cheaper circuits and all that other stuff. All right. Uh, I want to continue with what we call uh, the mean terms and max terms. We will continue with what we call the mean terms and max terms. Uh, mean terms, max terms, sum of products, product of sum. But uh, with the limit, time limit, I think this is our last session. I cannot start on that. So we will do it in our next sessions. Summary, today, today what do, do we do? We introduced the universal gates, and no. You need to go, how do you, you need to know how do you go from the primary gates and or and not to 
this gate. You need to know. All right. Why we use universal gates? The uh, switching transmission uh, switching is faster. The transmission is faster when using those NAND gates instead of all gates. All right. We introduced uh, the Boolean function f or g or whatever it is, which can be presented in the form of an expression, table, logic, diagram, table, truth. There are ways you can go from the expression to the truth table from the expression to the logic diagram. There are ways you can go vice versa, from the table to the expression, even from the logic diagram to the expression. You need to know these ways. I just introduced you to, I think, one or two from the expression to the truth table or from the expression to the logic diagram. As you do practice with some of the function we used here, Please learn how to manipulate vice versa, expression, truth table, logic diagram. How do you go from one representation to another? Because this is what is in your exam. All right. Next week, we'll be talking of sum of products. We'll be talking of product of sum. Why we use those mean terms, why we use those max terms. And I think for today, with all the confusion, uh, fair and fine, we're okay. Questions, comments? Questions and comments? None. Okay. And with that, thank you, Ezo Mashiriri. And with that, I think we conclude uh, this session of uh, logic design. Stop the share.